This video was sponsored by Skillshare. More on them later. Although they didn't end up playing a huge role in the show, the Hut Twins from the Book of Boba Fett were two of my favorite characters. Part of that's just being a big fan of Jabba and Huts in general, but I thought they were pretty unique and well fleshed out considering how little screen time they actually had. We have the sister Hut who is kind of scheming with her brother and talking behind her little fan there, and then we have the brother who apparently uses these rodents to mop off his sweat from his body, which is charming. So when Desert Octopus came up with this model for the huts and their bearers, I printed it right away and made a video about that. At the time, I was kind of under a time crunch, and I didn't have the, the time or energy to make all of this at full size. This was originally designed to be a 3 and 3 quarter inch scale model, so the normal size for Star Wars figures, but I printed it at half size just to make it a little bit more manageable. But I like big huts. And I cannot lie. So when I heard that Gio Sanmo had created his own version of the Hut Twins, I decided I would print them at the full size that he had designed them at, which in this case was not just three and three quarter inches, it was actually one twelfth scale, which is the size for Hasbro's Black series. Gio Sanmo did agree to give me the models for free to review in this video, so I thank him for that. As you can see, there are quite a few parts, and in fact some of the ones pictured here you print multiple times, so it's a fair amount of work to just print these. Generally speaking, I prefer to use resin printing these days. It's just easier and a lot more detailed, but for certain things, like the Hut Twins in this case, and especially the platform that they ride on, they're just way too big to actually fit in my resin printers, and instead of trying to cut up the model and stitch it together later on, I decided to do a kind of combination approach, doing some of the models on a filament-based FDM 3D printer, and other parts like the smaller, more detailed accessories and so forth on my resin printer. Here I'm starting to print the platform on my Creality CR10S4, which is quite a large printer, and you can see it actually fills up almost the entire print bed, at least from side to side. I did run into several problems doing this, actually. One was this. I haven't run into this kind of problem for a long time, but basically what happens is the model gets detached from the print bed, but the printer keeps on going and keeps expelling filament, and it just makes a giant glob around the hot end there. And in this case, I basically had to replace the whole thing. I did another version of this where I basically used the wrong settings and it just didn't look very good. The surface finish was not up to my standards, so I printed it again. And I did eventually get a usable version, as I will show you. So if you do want to tackle this project, just keep in mind you're going to need a large printer and a lot of time. So here we have the completed Hut Twin uh, bodies and arms. As you saw, I printed the bodies on my filament 3D printer, so these are relatively light compared to maybe what they would be with resin, uh, but I think the level of detail is actually really good. I'm always kind of impressed when I take the time to print something at the finest layer height, how good it really looks, but, you know, the trade-off is that it really does take a long time. This one was more than two days printing just to get these two bodies. And then I went ahead and did the arms on my resin printer because those would easily fit and wouldn't take very long to print. I think the first thing I'm going to do is uh, go ahead and attach the arms and then hopefully they'll still fit together <laughs> with them attached. All right, now that I've got the arms attached, I want to see if I can still get these to sort of fit together properly. Hopefully they will. A little bit of a tight fit. It's possible. I may need to break out the heat gun and just soften up her tail just a tiny bit. There we go. You know, I might have just not had her quite uh, situated properly originally because I think I would have been able to get it in there without doing this, but uh, in any case, I think it looks fine now. So in terms of scale, these are obviously supposed to be Black Series scale or six inch scale. Uh, I think they look about right. The Hut Twins are noticeably smaller than Jabba was. And of course they're curled around each other as well. 
But if we look at what we see on screen, they seem to be maybe around the same height or slightly uh, shorter than a humanoid. And here is the Black Series Greedo for comparison. Uh, just because I'm sure some people want to see this, we have also the 6-inch Black Series Java for comparison. Uh, Height-wise, they are roughly the same. Actually, the Brother Hut is taller, but they are considerably, uh, you know, in terms of the overall volume that they take up, they're a lot smaller than this figure is. But I think it's okay. I think this is a fine scale for these characters. So, it's time to move on to the rest of the model, namely their litter. So these slots here, and also for the railing, just due to the nature of FDM 3D printing, are a little tight. So what I'm going to try to do is, uh, well first of all I cut these so that they'd be at an angle and go in the slots more easily, but also I'm going to try and heat up the slots at um, with a heat gun and see if I can't press these in here uh, a little bit more easily that way. This is a trick that I use pretty frequently when I have trouble getting filament printed parts to fit together. One mistake I made when printing this is that I had this filled up with support material, which really wasn't necessary for it to print this hole going all the way through for a pole to be inserted. And I found that getting rid of that was a huge pain. Also, there's kind of some surface quality problems here, but we can solve that with some sanding and a little uh, primer, so we're not going to worry about that right now. But getting the support material out of those holes is going to be hard. Well, that was painful. My approach was to take one of these rods that I bought to serve as the rods, the, the carrying rods, and just hammer it through the hole with a hammer to force the support material out the other end, which should work as a theory, uh, but it was harder than I would have expected, and at one point I was hammering in from this end, and it went through, and it kind of got off track, I guess, and you know, you can see it's off of where the actual uh, channel should be, so it made a little problem there. Thankfully this is just the bottom, so I don't really think it's that big of a deal. I'm not even sure if I'm... I guess I'll put a little putty or something there, but it's not a big deal. Uh, and the other side was much easier. I was able to hammer that one in relatively painlessly. So as you can see, uh, just goes in here. You know what? <laughs> I'm going to I'm gonna have to go through the other end so it'll get in the channel properly. There we go. Goes in there nicely, and so does this other one. So you can see there, uh, if I turn it around, we've got our, uh, got our rods in place. And all I have to do now, well, <laughs> as far as the rods are concerned, is to put these little holders in the slots in here. And uh, these, of course, will line up and hold these other rods along the side. So I used some epoxy glue to glue all the parts together because it's nice and strong and also has some gap filling properties and a little bit of elasticity as well. I did end up using the heat gun on the slots for these just to soften them up a little bit and make them easier to get in. And here you can see the metal rod going in. I decided not to glue these in place because it's better for them to be removable, I think. Having them permanently attached would definitely make it more difficult to display this because it would be basically twice as deep. All right, so here we have the model all ready for priming and painting. The parts here that you can see that are sort of a bluish gray, these ones right here, like the arms and everything, these were printed in resin and mostly just, you know, because they were small enough or had fine details that uh, would better work with resin. And then everything else, with the exception of these railings, which I did do in resin, but have been primed, everything else, uh, like the huts themselves and the platform, was done in uh, filament, just because they're so large. But I think once we, you know, cover it with paint and everything, you won't be able to tell any difference at all between those two media, so that'll be nice. Uh, I haven't glued down anything in particular, so in fact I don't think I'm going to be gluing most of this stuff down. I'm just going to have it be 
uh, separate from the platform so we can take the Hut Twins off if we want to or we can move around the accessories and so forth. But uh, yeah, basically we're ready to move on to the next stage which is painting. I ended up priming the huts in white and also the pillows and then the platform and a lot of the other stuff in black. I'm going to be doing things like uh, the bowl and you know the little rodent creatures and whatever in uh, you know various colors. I'm just going to do those all by hand without trying to do a spray can base coat on those. And basically the reason behind this is that um, with the white ones I'm going to be using lighter colors like this. The huts are going to be given a base coat of a kind of a beige and then work up from there. Uh, and you don't want to be starting with too dark of a base color there because it can be difficult to get good coverage. Uh, with the black, I don't know, I could have been gray or even white, I suppose, but I thought because some parts of the uh, platform are going to be kind of a metallic or a darker reddish brown color that it would work well to have a dark base color on it as well. So that's the rationale behind that. Let's get to painting. If you watched my other video about the miniature Hut Twins model, you'll remember that I had some trouble painting them and ended up giving up on recording the painting process altogether because I kept having to redo things and it was frustrating. So I was determined this time to try and document it as much as possible and also to uh, kind of nail down this process a little bit better than I had before. I'm still getting used to the airbrush despite having had it for around a year at this point, but I do think every time I use it I learn something about how to use it a little bit better. Uh, in this case it was basically just a, a layering process. I started out with beige, then went with the green and in the case of the brother pot here. I added some brown for shading and then on top of that did some highlights in more beige and also used a brown wash with a brush to get in some of the crevices. The eyes and other facial features on these huts are really closer to the CGI huts that we've had in the past so I didn't try and make it as close to the uh, puppet from Return of the Jedi as I might ordinarily do if I was painting a Jabba. So these eyes for example are on the simple side. But I think they came out pretty well. After painting in the pupils and putting on some gloss coat to make them shiny, I decided to add a white reflection in the eye, the kind that you might find in a doll's eye, just because it seemed to be lacking a little bit of life. And that actually did seem to help a fair amount. I was relatively happy with how the brother turned out, but I was a little nervous about tackling the sister because I wasn't sure about the the coloration, is it more of a pink, is it more of a purple? I ended up going with kind of a combination of the two and uh, kind of using the same layering technique to try and have a nice gradation uh, between colors. It was difficult at times because I'm still not good at controlling the airbrush and it would, you know, come out too much or not enough or get clogged and uh, I would have to sort of go back and try and fix that. But honestly, in the end, it came out really well. I'm very happy with the uh, combination of colors that I ended up with here on her body. I used a brush to brush on some light highlights, which actually I think worked really well. And then of course used a brush for the fine details and so forth. And in the end, I'm really happy with how she turned out in particular. I think uh, she's got a lot of personality there. Of course we had to uh, add their accessories. We have the fan and the little rodent for the brother there. Then we had to tackle the biggest accessory of all, which is their platform. As I said before, I'm not entirely sure what color all of this stuff is supposed to be, but I went with a reddish brown and put a dark brown kind of wash on top of that to simulate almost a Japanese lacquer look, which I thought looked pretty cool. For the center part here that they actually sit on, I kind of in my mind feel like it's supposed to be a stone slab or something like that. Like huts in general like to just sit on stone thrones like Jabba did. So I painted it gray and then put a uh, dark wash on top of that and put some lighter gray highlights on top of that. Uh, for the metallic parts I started with a dark brown undercoat and then put a 
bronze color and then a brown wash on top of that to kind of bring out the details. Again, I had to take some artistic license in the sense of just determining what color everything was supposed to be because it's not clear from the show. That was true with these pillows, which I just decided to kind of make random colors and this one I used some tape to make a striped pattern on, which worked out okay. The glass parts of the frog bowl were printed in transparent resin and then I painted the metal parts on top of that. I also printed and painted the frogs that came with the model and added some pigment to some epoxy resin to make it look like some kind of liquid there in the bowl. This did end up having some bubbles in it uh, that I couldn't really get rid of. I did try using a heat gun to kind of try and pop the ones on the surface, which helped a little bit, but I don't really think it matters all that much in this case. Before we look at the finished piece, I'd like to talk to you about this video's sponsor, Skillshare. Skillshare is an online learning community with thousands of classes on a wide variety of topics. There are no ads and they're adding new premium classes all the time, so you're sure to find something that interests you. Recently, I've been taking the class Beautiful Plastic, Creating a Great Designer Toy by Paul Budnitz, who is the founder of Kid Robot, a company that creates designer toys. Designer toys are high-end toys targeted at adults and might be closer to vinyl statues than traditional toys. It's a relatively recent trend, so first he gives some of the history behind it, and then goes on to talk about what goes into designing and producing this kind of toy. While this is more of a general overview rather than something that you can follow step by step to make your own toy, as a collector of many of these kinds of things, I found it very interesting to see what is involved in their creation. And as someone who's made his own toys from time to time using 3D printing, I'm hoping to use some of his advice to make mine better. The first 1,000 people to use the link in the video description or to use my code Mighty Jamba's Collection will receive a one month free trial of Skillshare. Thanks again to Skillshare for sponsoring this video. And here we have the finished piece, and I'm really happy with how this turned out. I've got it sitting here on a little platform just to make it a little higher up. I did end up gluing the huts together because I couldn't really get them apart once I put them together without scraping a bunch of paint off, and because of the way they're shaped, they're not really suitable for displaying on their own anyway. I will say this did take quite a while to actually finish, Part of it was being sidetracked with other projects and things like that, but uh, a couple of months went by from the start of this project until the end, and it felt like I was always kind of working on one aspect or the other, getting the printing done, getting everything assembled, primed, painted. It did end up being a major project. So I had all these accessories like the pillows. I tried not to go too crazy with the detail on some of these things, but I did like uh, this stripe pattern that I ended up putting there. It kind of gives a nice contrast to the other stuff on the platform. Originally I was just going to put one of these rodents in the cage, but it really seemed like there should be a bunch of them in there waiting uh, kind of pathetically. So I ended up printing several of these and putting them in the little cage here. I thought that was kind of a cool little detail. I also ended up putting one of the rodents in this little cup holder like thing. I guess that's what it's for. Not entirely sure, but uh, yeah, it seemed appropriate. And of course here we have the frog bowl next to the sister, which was kind of a complicated effect to pull off because we've got transparent resin, regular resin, uh, epoxy resin for the liquid. But I was happy that you can see the frogs there sort of through the glass of the bowl. So I'm pretty happy with that effect overall. And as I mentioned earlier, I think the kind of layered gradient effect and the blending of the colors that I was able to achieve, especially on the sister, really did turn out pretty well. So happy with that for sure. For me, this is basically just a standalone piece. I'm not gonna be displaying it with any figures, I don't think, but since this is supposed to be a black series scale piece, I thought I would put a couple of black series figures here just to show you what they look like. And, uh, you know, I think they blend in fairly well. Unfortunately, I don't have any actual Black Series figures from the Book of Boba Fett, or I'd show you those, but, uh, you know, this gives you an idea. The models are available for purchase on most of the major 3D model marketplaces, and I'll link you to Cults 3D in the video description if you're interested in maybe buying them. In the middle of me working on this project, he did come out with models for the platform bearers as well. 
I don't have time to print or paint those right at the moment, but I thought I would mention it if you're interested, and I may come back to them in the future. So that's about it for today's video. I think this is a good example of how uh, 3D printing really shines compared to maybe traditional uh, model making or certainly compared to collecting uh, toys from places like Hasbro because I was able to make these models, including the Desert Octopus one and the one from Geosanmo, within a few days or weeks of these characters appearing for the first time on TV, which is pretty impressive. Anyway, I'd be interested to hear what you have to say about these and about the Hut Twins in general, and thank you very much for watching. This video was brought to you by Skillshare and my Patreon supporters, including these Palace VIPs and especially Angelica Brady. Thanks very much for your support. If you'd like to know more about how you can support the channel for as little as $1 a month, click the link in the video description.